Who is a woman's wali if her father passed away? It's the next male relative that can check after her affairs from her dad's side. Then the mom's side. Okay. And then after that, if there's none of that, then anyone in the community can be a wali. Okay. The imam usually, or someone that the imam appoints. I taught some people how to be a wali. Okay. And I give them a checklist that you have to do. So let's say there is a sister. Let's say she's already married. So that makes the obligation a little less heavy. This has already been married. She was divorced. And she wants to marry another guy. In our fiqh, she has to have a wali. But the wali can't stop her from doing what she wants to do. The wali then has a checklist. You need to go and check on any other ca the, the, the character of this man. So you need to go and find somebody that lived with him, worked with him in business, or traveled with him, or anything similar that would expose this person, them to, to his interactions while tired, with money, and in day-to-day -day recourse. Don't go and ask the imam. Everyone behaves perfect in front of the imam. People always say to me, hey, you know so-and-so? Yeah, but everyone comes with their best face, you know, in the masjid. No one's, you know, cursing in the masjid. So I don't know people as they truly are. That's the truth. Everyone comes in their best behavior. So go and ask people in their life. So you need to at least three people who have this experience. All right. Then you need to go find out about his finances. Because the Prophet Sallallahu said, if you accept his character and his deen, isn't part of the deen that he covers the costs? Isn't that his religious obligation? So you don't need to just see if he prays and fasts. You need to see if he will he be able to fulfill the obligation of paying the rent and food for this woman, right? So you need to make sure that she's not going to be harmed by marrying a guy. Oh, lo and behold, we're out of money on month two of the marriage, right? The, the, it's the wali's job. Number five in some cases, you need to get a health checkup, uh, like a, the medical records for this person. If there is any reason to believe that maybe he has a past and an STD. Okay. We don't ask people if you have zina, But we do have the right to ask, when you marry this woman, are you going to pass on an STD to her? That we have the right to ask. Okay. Uh, number six. What was number six? Um, number six what was number six we said the three guys then uh, the finances then the health record and then uh, finances also be the credit score to make sure you could rent something right and uh, what was number six I can't remember number six was but that was it number those basically those things that will ensure that you know his character and his dean because part of the dean is that he covers these costs and that he can be intimate. So you can't now marry a woman, marry a guy. Then on the night of the marriage, all right, this is supposed to be all happy night. Oh, by the way, I have an STD. Oh, by the way, I can't rent an apartment. All right. Oh, by the, because I have no credit score. Oh, by the way, ask your mom if she can cook for us because I don't have any money. Oh, number six, negotiating the dowry. Number six is negotiating the dowry. So he goes, okay, what do you have in mind with the dowry? She says, I don't know, a thousand bucks. He said, why would you sell yourself short for a thousand bucks, right? 10,000. He goes and negotiates. It's very awkward for a woman to negotiate her, her own dowry. 